وهل أتاك حديث موسى إذ رأى نارا فقال لأهلهم كثوا إني آنست نارا لعني آتيكم منها بقبس أو أجد على النار هدى بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وبعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إذ تمشي أختك فتقول هل أدلكم على من يكفله فرجعناك إلى أمك كي تقر عينها ولا تحزن وقتلت نفسا فنجيناك من الغم وفتناك فتونا فلبثت سنين في أهل مدين ثم جئت على قدر يا موسى صدق الله العظيم So we continue with the discussion of the same verse which we elaborated on in the previous segment In the previous episode, we concluded on the miraculous intervention of the Almighty and how Musa alayhi salatu was salam was returned to the lap of his mom and she could nurse him, she could suckle him in the comfort of her house and receive an allowance from uh, Pharaoh as well. In, in, the verse, in, 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 in the portion of the same verse that follows, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds Musa alayhi salam of yet another favor. And that is, وَقَتَلْتَ nafsa. And O Musa, you had mistakenly claimed the life of a soul. Unintentionally, inadvertently, Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu was salam had killed a person. And this is referenced in the 28th chapter of the Quran, verses 15 to 21, Surah Qasas. And we will reference it with the book as well. So, فَنَجَّيْنَاكَ مِنَ الْغَمِّ We rescued you from grief. Musa alayhi salatu was salam was gripped by two types of grief, amongst other griefs, as we will explain in the, the tale that follows. A, will there be consequences from the Almighty for the mistake that I made? Uh, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had pardoned him, and this is mentioned in the verse as well. قَالَ رَبِّ إِنِّي ظَلَمْتُ نَفْسِي فَاغْفِرْ لِي فَغَفَرَ لَا Oh Allah, I have erred, forgive me, and Allah pardoned him. And the other fear was that the intelligence of Pharaoh will apprehend him and then there will be consequences. Uh, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, made an opening for him in this regard as well. And those were the circumstances around which he then le uh, you know, uh, left uh, Egypt and went to Madian, as we will uh, explain in, 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 uh, in the verses and in uh, the, the story that follows. So the verse here is وَقَتَلْتَ نَفْسًا وَقَتَلْتَ نَفْسًا You claim the life of a soul. So what's the backdrop of this year? The backdrop of this year is وَدَخَلَ الْمَدِينَةَ عَلَى حِينِ غَفْلَةٍ مِّنْ أَهْلِهَا And Musa alayhi salatu was salam on a particular occasion entered the city. Majority of the scholars say here it refers to Egypt, right? عَلَى حِينِ غَفْلَةٍ دَخَلَ He entered uh, the word dakhala, they say, is suggestive of the fact that he was gone out. So he was gone somewhere and he kind of came back. That's why the Quran used uh, the, the expression of dakhala, he entered, meaning he was not there. Ala hini ghaflatim min ahliha, when uh, the occupants, the inhabitants, the residents were somewhat unaware. Uh, you know, they were not focused, they were not alert. Again, in, in, in the footnotes of Jalalain and even Bain al-Sutur, between the lines it's mentioned, it was the time of Qaylula, the time of siesta. So people, midday, resting, sleeping, everybody's not up and focused. And until and, and today, in many parts of the Middle East, especially in, in uh, extreme heat, you'll find there's a bit of a shutdown at midday, and then things uh, start to resume in the latter part of the afternoon, early evening. على حين غفلة من أهلها فوجد فيها رجلين يقتتلا. So when he got into the city, he found the two people were fighting, they were arguing, they were quarrelling. هذا من شيعته وهذا من عدوه. One out of the two was from his tribe, was from amongst the Bani Israel, while the other was a foe and an opponent to him. هذا من هذا من شيعته وهذا من عدوه. 
So just to um, quote the text here of the book, وَلَمَّا كَانَ مُوسَى شَابًا قَوِيًّا أَتَاهُ اللَّهُ حُكْمًا وَعِلْمًا Allah endowed him with wisdom and knowledge. وَكَانَ مُوسَى يُبْغِضُ الظَّالِمِينَ So that we have a context to it. Musa alayhi salatu was salam by his very natural demeanor and his natural disposition. Although he was not yet a prophet, but he despised tyrants, oppressors, evildoers. Because a Nabi's nature and temperament is pure from the word go. From the word go, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, gives him a pure and a wholesome nature. وَيُحِبُّ الضُّعَثَ And Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu wa salam loved the poor and the weak and he would aid the vulnerable and uh, the, the weak. وَيَنْصُرُهُمْ وَكَذَلِكَ كُلُّ نَبِيٍ And that was the nature and the salient feature of every prophet. وَدَخَلَ مُوسَى مَدِينَةَ فِرْعَوْنَ مَرَّةً وَالنَّاسُ فِي لَهْوٍ وَشُغْرٍ People were heedless, people were engaged in different activities. As I mentioned, some suggest they were sleeping. Others men mentioned that they were in their own amusement and entertainment. And he finds that these two people are having a altercation. You know, I must uh, just share something, a very profound reflection I read. Back in the days, back in the days, when two people were quarreling, then the third person would interject and stop the fight. But today, unfortunately, the third person comes and videos it and then makes it viral. That's the sad reality. So if two people are having an argument, the senior, the independent person would come and say, listen, folks, break up, separate the two. Don't be nasty. Don't get at one another's throats and resolve it and, and try and reconcile. But today, no, no, there's some sniper from some hidden post here. He captures the data and the image and the entire uh, fight and feud and argument and altercation and vulgarity. And then it's gone vulgar. Uh, it's gone viral. And how often, how often on social media, you'll see there's an argument and there's an altercation and there's a feud in this mall and this restaurant and this parking bay and this place. La ilaha illallah. That's the sad reality of uh, the world in which we live. وَوَجَدَ فِيهَا رَجُلَيْنِ يَقْتَتِلَانِ هَذَا مِنْ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ وَهَذَا مِنَ الْأَقْبَاطِ أَعْدَاءِ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ So this argument is happening. One is from amongst his own. One is an opponent. فَصَرَخَ الْإِسْرَائِيلِيُّ وَنَادَ مُوسَى لِنَصْرِهِ وَشَكَلْ قِبْطِيَةِ So his um, ally or his uh, you know, person from his tribe and his friend uh, called out to Musa alayhi salatu was salam and he said, please come and aid me and assist me. And he complained about the common enemy and the common foe. Common in the sense that uh, he was not amongst uh, from the Bani Israel. So in that sense, there was a sense of common hostility towards him. وَغَذِبَ مُوسَى فَضَرَبَ الْقِبْطِيَّةِ فَكَانَتِ الْقَاضِيَةِ Obviously, Musa alayhi salatu was salam heard the, the, the context and understood it and, and analyzed it. And he realized that the person from his tribe, from Bani Israel, was the innocent person and he was the victim and he was on the receiving end. So Musa alayhi salatu was salam intervened. Musa alayhi salatu was salam intervened and he tried to assist the weak. And that was his motive. He was driven by nothing other than aiding the vulnerable. He was driven by nothing other than aiding the vulnerable, the weak, the oppressed and the victim. And the Quran says, فَوَكَزَهُ مُوسَى فَقَضَى عَلَيْهِ فَوَكَزَهُ مُوسَى فَقَضَى عَلَيْهِ So Musa alayhi salatu was salam gave him a fist, gave him a blow. Uh, but it proved to be so fatal that it actually claimed his life. It actually claimed his life. From this, we also get an understanding of the physical strength of a Nabi, the physical strength of a Nabi. When the Sahaba were digging the trenches and they came to a boulder and they couldn't break that boulder and they couldn't, you know, fragment that boulder. And the Messenger وسلم, took the axe, the narration of Bidayah and Nihaya, and then he struck it with his own hands and he read the verse, وَتَمَّتْ كَلِمَةُ رَبِّكَ صِدْقًا وَعَدْلًا لَا مُبَدِّلًا لِكَلِمَاتِهِ وَتَمَّتْ كَلِمَةُ رَبِّكَ صِدْقًا وَعَدْلًا لَا مُبَدِّلًا لِكَلِمَاتِهِ And then it fragmented and there were the sparks. And then uh, Salman radiallahu anhu said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, what was that? And he said, did you see it? And he said, yes, indeed, O Nabi of Allah. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the different cities of the world have, have, have been conquered. And Allah has opened up this for me and that city and that city. And it was only the companions, radiallahu anhum, that at the time of absolute poverty and penury, where they had stones attached to their belly, uh, they had absolute trust in the 
prophecy and uh, the words of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that is the time the Munafiqeen who had come along in Khandaq, they said, no, this is just a blatant lie. And they said, مَا وَعَدَنَا اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ إِلَّا غُرُورًا وَالْعِيَاذُ بِاللَّهِ That Allah and His Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has deceived us and have spoken a lie to us. وَالْعِيَاذُ بِاللَّهِ So a Prophet has the highest spiritual strength and a Prophet has phenomenal physical strength as well. Physical strength as well. Uh, there are narrations of Sayyidina Sulaiman alayhi salatu wasalam that he consummated the relationship with 70 spouses in one night. With 70 spouses in one night. Anyway, uh, Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu wasalam became angry. He intervened. He assisted. He gave the Qibti a blow, a fist, a punch. Lo and behold, this was serious. It was fatal. فَكَانَتِ الْقَاضِيَةِ فَقَضَى عَلَيْهِ This man passed on immediately. وَمَاتَ الْقِبْطِيُّ وَنَدِمَ مُوسَى جِدَّ The Qibti passed away and Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, he was not yet a Nabi, but like I said, the makeup, the demeanor, the disposition of a Nabi is noble from inception. Immediately he regretted, he lamented, he was sad, he wasn't happy that uh, in the intervention, uh, the, the, the life of uh, the, the opposite person was, was claimed and lost. وَعَرَفَ أَنَّ هَذَا مِنْ عَمَلِ الشَّيْطَانِ And he realized that this is, this is not the doings of, of a good person. This is the interference of the devil. This is the interference of the devil. And we do know Islam teaches us that whenever anyone has wronged you, then you have a right to retaliate. But in retaliating, you cannot overstep the mark. And this is something very, very key. My respected brother, sister, we need to understand this. So if somebody has hit you, and this is mentioned in the books of fiqh, right, jurisprudence, if somebody has hit you, then you have the right to retaliate. But remember, your blow and your retaliation cannot be more severe or, or more intense than what you received. Now, the likelihood, the likelihood for you to give less or equal is very rare. The likelihood, if somebody has, has kicked you or punched you or done something or, or inflicted some injury on you, for you to retort in a like manner of equal infliction or less is very, very difficult. And no sooner do you retort and retaliate above what you received, then remember you are now the tyrant and the former tyrant is now or the former aggressor is now the victim. So the help of Allah is not with you any longer. When he hurt you, you received, you were the victim, the help of Allah was with you. But when you responded above what was inflicted upon you, now you've exceeded the limit. So now you have wronged your brother. Now the help of Allah is with him because now in the subsequent scenario, he's the victim. So the safest way we always say is to forgive. To forgive and then the help of Allah is with you because you have pardoned. So, فَتَابَ مُوسَى إِلَى اللَّهِ وَأَنَابْ Musa alayhi salatu wasalam repented to Allah and he said, Oh my Lord, forgive me, forgive me, I have erred and uh, accept my tawbah. قَالَ هَذَا مِنْ عَمَلِ الشَّيْطَانِ إِنَّهُ عَدُوٌ مُضِلٌ مُبِينٌ Immediately he turned, he repented to the Almighty and this is discussed in the 28th chapter in Surah Qasas in the verses between 15 and 21. That was said, that was done, that was concluded, that uh, Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu wasalam repented to the Almighty. Of course, news gets around now, and news gets around that, you know what, there has been a murdered body. There's a corpse that's lying around, and the murderer is, is unknown, the murderer is unknown. So Musa alayhi salatu wasalam was now in panic, as the Quran speaks about it. إِنَّهُ عَدُوٌّ مُضِلٌّ مُبِينٌ قَالَ رَبِّ إِنِّي ظَلَمْتُ نَفْسِي فَاغْفِرْ لِي فَغَفَرَ لَهُ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ فَأَصْبَحَ فِي الْمَدِينَةِ خَائِفَ فَأَصْبَحَ فِي الْمَدِينَةِ خَائِفَ Musa alayhi salam now spends the night, the morning, the moments, the hours in the city in great panic looking over his shoulders in anxiety. Uh, you know, is anybody coming to apprehend me, intercept me? What's the consequences? What's the repercussion? Fate has it such, fate has it such, the next day, the next day, Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu was um, finds that the same person who was arguing with that man who Musa alayhi salam inadvertently killed is having an argument with someone else. 
He's having an argument with someone else. So yesterday this whole thing happened and there is a search, right? وَرَأَى الشُّرْطَ قَتِيلًا قِبْطِيًّا مِنْ خَدَمِ فِرْعَوْنَ فَفَتَّشُوا عَنِ الْقَاتِلِ وَلَكِنَّهُمْ لَمْ يَهْتَدُوا إِلَيْهِ That uh, the intelligence of Pharaoh, uh, they observed that there's a corpse, there's a dead body here and the, the killer, the murderer, the sniper is unknown. So they, they, they look in around and they search in. وَمَنْ يَدُلُّهُمْ عَلَى الْقَاتِلِ وَلَا يَعْلَمُهُ إِلَّا مُوسَى وَإِسْرَائِيلِ and who can indicate to them the murderer? The only two people from the humans that know about it is Musa alayhi salam. And obviously he's not going to divulge it. It was unintentional. It was not deliberate. It was not malicious. It was not with a nasty motive. And the other person was uh, the, the Israeli. And obviously he will not divulge it because it was in his interest to assist him. So anyway, they look in and, and Pharaoh is now really in anger and in rage. And Musa alayhi salam is in panic. So the next day, Musa alayhi salatu was salam, you know, tiptoeing, watching his moves, very cautious, very afraid, uh, very apprehensive. وفي اليوم الثاني يرى موسى ذلك الإسرائيلي في قتال وخصام مع قبطي آخر. Lo and behold, you won't believe it. The same person is an argument and an altercation with another person, with another person. And you know what you say, no skin on his face. No skin on his face without any reservation or apprehension. When he sees Musa alayhi salam, he screams out again to Musa alayhi salam, Oh Musa, please come and help me. Come and help me. Please, I need your help. You know, unfortunately, some people just have a nature of arguing. Some people, any social gathering, they need the final say, they need to dictate, they need to argue, they need to counter. It's like it's a talk show radio and you need to present uh, an opposite view to the whole thing. It's just a social discussion. Don't elevate it to a personal level. Why, why get personal about the whole thing? Why, why just, 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 you know what, destroy the whole happiness and the bliss? So, uh, oh Musa, 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 please, please, please come here. قال موسى إنك لغوي مبين. You are an outright troublemaker. موسى عليه الصلاة والسلام said to him, إنك لغوي مبين. You are a troublemaker, مبين, and an an apparent troublemaker. I mean, looks like this is in your nature. Looks like this is this is your practice daily. It just so happened I passed by yesterday, only to know now today it's someone else. Heaven knows what would happen the the day to come. ألا تزال في خصام وقتال is this how you spend your day every day? We just argue and fight and, and in an altercation and a feud with someone. So Musa alayhi salatu was salam kind of rebuked him, reproached him, admonished him, chastised him. And having said that, Musa alayhi salam again then inched forward to see how he could assist. Now understand this correctly. So when this person from Bani Israel was arguing on the subsequent day with a new person and he asked Musa to intervene, first Musa alayhi salatu was salam admonished him verbally and like, I mean, really, yesterday, you seen what happened, there was consequences, uh, you know, it wasn't that it just got resolved, the poor person passed away and now there's the intelligence looking for us, etc, etc. And you still don't have a problem to go next day and fight the next day. Some people over petty things at a funeral. At a funeral. Like, like, listen, if we cannot put our feuds on hold momentarily at a cemetery, then when will we ever do that? When will we ever do that? Uh, Usaid ibn Hudayr radiallahu used to say, لو أني أكون كما أكون في حال من أحوال الثلاثة لكنت من أهل الجنة وما شككت في ذلك حين أقرأ القرآن وحين أسمعه يقرأ وإذا شهدت خطبة رسول الله وإذا شهدت جنازة I wish I can perpetually sustain the spirituality that I enjoy on three occasions. A, when I read Quran or I listen to Quran being recited. B, when I attend a sermon or a khutbah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi And number three, when I attend a funeral. My heart is so aligned and focused. I wish I can sustain that spirituality perpetually. And if I can, I'm optimistic that Allah will give me Jannah. Of course, he was a companion of the Prophet Wasallam, and Allah has declared in the Quran that there is Jannah for all the companions. Husna. The point I'm saying is that the point of cemetery at the point of reflection of death, at that time, how aligned and focused, people could go into an argument and get personal and, and, and say condescending things and nasty things. La ilaha illallah. So Sayyidina Musa said to him, Ala azalu ansuruka wa usa'iduka. So uh, I must just come and help you and you just continue fighting. You know, that, 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 that's, that's what we do, you know. They, they say that um, 
if you always defend your child, if you always defend your child and you never discipline your child, then tomorrow you'll hire a lawyer to defend your child. If your nature is that whenever your son argues he is right and the next party is wrong and you always defend him, then tomorrow you will hire a lawyer. Disciplining your child is not child abuse. We need to be clear about this here. We are anti-child abuse, but discipline to bring good values and morals in a child. Often it is the juvenile delinquency that is not um, contained, which then grows up and evolves into, uh, you know, monsters in, in, in the latter part of their life. May Allah guide one and all. وأراد الإسراء ورأى الإسرائيلي غضب موسى وسمع ملامة. so the Israeli realized Musa al Islam is angry and he's reproaching me. so I just hope that I don't become a victim after what I observed yesterday. nonetheless after after reproaching him, Musa al Islam out of his good will again decided to inch forward to try and resolve the matter again. But as he inched forward, the Israeli feared that the blow might land on me now. The blow might land on me because yesterday when I called him, he came to the aid. This time when I called him, he first admonished me, chastised me. And now he's coming forward. So he said to Musa alayhi salatu was salam, Ya Musa, aturidu an taqtulani kama qatalta nafsan bil ams. إن تريد إلا أن تكون جبارا في الأرض وما تريد أن تكون من المصلحين. Oh Musa, do you want to kill me like how you killed that person yesterday? Oh my word! No sooner did the Israeli blurt this that Musa عليه السلام was responsible for claiming the life of that person. The opponent intercepted that info and off he went, off he went. So, okay, yesterday in the last 24 hours, people are looking high and low to identify the murderer, the killer, the sniper. Now in this argument, that got exposed, that got exposed. And he said to Musa alayhi salam, In turidu illa an takuna jabbaran fil ard. Oh Musa, you are just out to cause mischief on the earth and you just want to be a, a you know what, a uh, tyrant and you just want to uh, show your might and your muscle. So unfortunately, this person who Musa alayhi salatu wasalam aided, he divulged the information and by nature he, he was one who would just argue and get into fights and, and, and that was his nature. You know, someone said in the Urdu language, उन लोगों को रिश्ता जोड़ने से कोई ताल्लुक नहीं, उनको रिश्ता जोड़ने से कोई वास्ता नहीं, जिनको अपने मतलब से मतलब होता है, उनको रिश्ता जोड़ने से कोई मतलब नहीं, जिनको अपने मतलब से मतलब होता है, those that are driven by their selfish vested interests, they might chant the slogans of nobility and virtue. We need to reconcile between two factions. They are not interested in uniting two people or two quarreling parties. They are only interested in massaging their own ego and covering their own interests. Unko to apne matlab se matlab hota hai. This person was only driven by his own interests. If you aided me yesterday, Musa, then good luck, great, as long as my opponent was defeated. And today, if I seen that that, that I could be a victim in any way, then I have no issue in blowing the whistle, being the whistleblower and exposing you. So, هُنَالِكَ عَرَفَ الْقِبْطِيُّ أَنَّ مُوسَى هُوَ قَاتِلُ أَمْسِي The Qibti, the opponent realized that Musa alayhi salatu was salam was the person who had claimed the life of that person. وَذَهَبَ الْقِبْطِيُّ وَأَخْبَرَ الشُّرْتَ بِأَنَّ مُوسَى هُوَ الْقَاتِلُ he sees the moment of he went and some narration suggests that this person was was somewhat connected in the royal family. So his profile was a prominent profile as well. It was a prominent profile, but this is historical narrations. The Quran is silent to that. The Quran just says one was from uh, the tribe of Musa and one was his opponent. When Fir'aun heard about this, he was in rage. He was in anger. Rabibul Qasri wa Radi'ul Mulki, that lad, that boy who grew up in my palace and I arranged for him to be nursed and suckled and who ate in my palace and grew up. 
ولكن الله اراد ان ينجو موسى من شر فرعون وشرطته but of course the plan of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was to rescue sayyidina musa alayhi salatu was salam and to get musa alayhi salatu was salam out from here so the next day of course musa alayhi salatu was salam was in great concern and in great worry and in great panic uh, because now the, the 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 news has been exposed has been divulged pharaoh has heard about it and pharaoh's got the the, the muscle and the clout and 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 like Sheikh Abul Hassan Ali Nadwi rahimahullah writes at one point akhiru sahmin fi kinanati al-muluk akhiru sahmin fi kinanati al-muluk the last arrow in a king's quiver is violence when a king cannot engage you logically intellectually then he flexes his muscle through through violence through authority through power through clout I, I, will, I will have you uh, imprisoned, I will have you uh, executed, I will have you um, incarcerated, right? Now he has power and, and people then buckle under that pressure. So the Quran says, وَجَاءَ رَجُلٌ مِّنْ أَقْصَ الْمَدِينَةِ يَسْعَى قَالَ يَا مُوسَىٰ إِنَّ الْمَلَأَ يَأْتَمِرُونَ بِكَ لِيَقْتُلُوكَ فَخْرُجْ إِنِّي لَكَ مِنَ النَّاصِحِينَ and while this is unfolding and playing, a person comes, Waja'a, and a person came, Rajul, Min Aqsal Medina, from the most distant part of the city, Yas'a, he came running. Qala Ya Musa, he said, O oh Musa, Inna al Mala'a, verily the leaders and the chiefs, Ya'tamiruna bik, they are planning about you, they are consulting about you, they are plotting about you. Inna al Mala'a Ya'tamiruna bik. Uh, they plan in your assassination. They plan in your killing. But of course, they couldn't do that because Allah had a plan of Nabuwat in place and there was a life ahead of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu was salam. Um, in Tafsir Uthmani, Alama Shabir Ahmad Uthmani rahimahullah writes so beautifully that uh, sometimes a person survives a bullet wound and he dies out of a cough. So the reason you survive the bullet wound, not because you're a fighter, not because you're resilient and not because you're strong and not because your immunity is great, it's because your time wasn't up. And the reason you succumb to a simple flu, fever or cough was because your time was up. Your time was up. The chiefs are plotting to kill you. Uh, my advice is just move, just flee, just leave, just depart, just leave Egypt and go inni laka min nasihin by Allah I am your well-wisher. He leaves Egypt under these challenging, daunting circumstances. The words of the Quran 20th Jews, 28th chapter, Surah Qasas, فَخَرَجَ Hence he exits, Minha from Egypt, خَائِفًا fearing, يَتَرَقَّبْ waiting, looking. قَالَ رَبِّ نَجِّنِي مِنَ الْقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ He said, O oh my Lord, rescue me from a tyrant nation. So we conclude uh, again and tie it up with the verses of um, Surah Taha where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminded Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam وَقَتَلْتَ نَفْسًا and you mistakenly claim the life of a soul. فَنَجَّيْنَاكَ مِنَ الْغَمِّ We saved you from grief by pardoning you. And we also saved you from any consequences from Pharaoh and his people by facilitating your exit and getting you out of Egypt. How? By a kind person coming to whisper in his ears, Musa, make your way out and off you go. So he leaves Egypt and from here he heads forward going asking Allah to guide his direction asking Allah to guide his direction because he has nothing he has no shelter he has no food warrant of arrest are, uh, on him and 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 in the cover of dark he needs to exit amidst these circumstances let's wait and see how the path opens up and how Allah navigates and maps out his future may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us absolute trust and reliance on all his promises wa salli allahumma wa sallim ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen